which the law of averages. Now, also very important is the second moment, actually, where we subtract out the mean. But summation p of x, x squared. And why is this important? Because of the central limit theorem. And the central limit theorem says uh, that if you have a large number of these random and scale it right, you get phi of x, a limiting density, which is 1 over square root of 2 pi uh, sigma squared e to the minus x squared over 2 sigma squared. That's this. You'll notice as we breeze through this that I've assuming the mean is zero here and uh, the result in any case the central limit theorem tells you not only does this go to the mean uh, but the shape of the limiting distribution as it cinches up on the mean will be Gaussian and sigma squared of course would be this but I didn't want to write it because sigma squared is the variance not the second moment it's only the second moment when the mean is zero alright good now here's some other things suppose I have a family densities, probability densities, indexed by theta. Think. Uh, these are the, all the Gaussian distributions with variance 1 and mean theta. Or these are all the uh, Bernoulli dis uh, all the uh, distributions on the outcome of a coin flip where theta is the probability of heads. So it's a family of distributions. And now you might be interested in how distinguishable are the members of this family from each other when you look at the data. IID drawings this and towards that end, you have something called the Fisher information. Uh, derivative with respect to theta of log f sub theta of x dx. And this is... result that says if you have an unbiased estimator for theta then expected squared error that is in your distinguishability that is expected theta based on x minus theta squared is greater than 1 over the Fisher information it's known as the Cremera Rao inequality. And it's achieved with equality when you have the Gaussian distributions with unknown mean, for example. So that's a nice notion of distinguishability. And 
uh, we'll find that this is sort of on the periphery of the, our subject, information theory. All right, here are some more functional. Entropy, h of x equals minus summation p of x log p of x. So this is the entropy. So it's not the expected value of x or the second moment, but it's the expected value of the log of p of x. But p of x is the distribution, so this is sort of self-referential. And this, uh, you say, oh, it's the expected value of the log of the distribution with respect to which it's the second, it's the uh, expected value. All right. Now I'll be giving a number of statements where this will be the answer, so let's put that off. We'll have i of x y equals summation p of x y log of the joint distribution over the product of the marginals. This is called mutual information. Then we'll have something called channel capacity, which is the max of I of x, y. over all marginals p of x. So assumed here is you have x goes in p of y given x is the distribution of what comes out. And this is called capacity or channel capacity. It's the maximum dependence of the input and the output. People will recognize the mutual information here as the expected value of the hood ratio the joint distribution P of S1 with respect to the product. Well, the likelihood ratio is what you use to do a hypothesis test, whether the likelihood's above a cer certain level or not. In law, it has to, you have to be new. So I measures the distinguishability of two things that are related from their being related by cause and effect. Do they have a joint distribution that's showing the causal relationship or are they independent? And here's another functional, dpq equals summation p of x log p of x over q of x over x. This is the expected value of the log likelihood ratio of p over q. And you can expect it to come up 
as the exponent and the probability of error of distinguishing samples that are drawn